but I'm definitely going to sit down, my, rest my little knee. I'm, I'm going to stand up when I read the word, but then I'm going to sit back down. My goodness, thank you, choir. Look at y'all looking like the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen. Look at this. I met y'all a little bit. I, I, I wonder why I was going to take them off, but I got the little red strips. You know, I, I'm, I'm coordinated. Got to coordinate with the choir. <laughs> Anyway, we're still in our series, Life More Abundantly, Life More Abundantly. We're believing uh, God. In fact, we already know God has us walking in an abundant life. Amen? Because, again, when we pray, what we say, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We already have all our spiritual blessings. We already have been graced with every good and perfect gift. The only trouble is we have to have enough faith to pull it down. Amen? It's already here. It's already here. Um, if you would, if you would, we're going to be in uh, the Gospel of John chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 4. We're going to be in the Gospel of John chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 4. And, and for those who have not uh, been a part of these uh, series, did y'all get a handout today? Y'all got a handout? Okay. If you're online and you're watching and you are not on our, ooh, I didn't email them out. Hey, we got to make sure we email uh, these these out. So if you're on the list already, we will email you um, these handouts if you don't uh, attend our church and just watch it online. If you go to our church, you just at home, you got to come get it. No, I'm just, just tripping. But we, we'll, we'll email them to you. Uh, if you need any of the other handouts um, that we've had uh, in the past, um, the scriptures and the affirmations of wealth, um, just email us at info at willardmaxwell.org or secretary at newbeachgrove.org. Amen? Amen. If you would, in the book of John, the book of John and the book of Hebrews, um, the book of John chapter 1, 16 through 17, I'm reading in the AM PC version. I'm reading in the Amplified uh, Bible Classic Edition for both versions because they give a little more words to uh, what this verse is. For out of his fullness, abundance, we have all received, all had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another and spiritual blessings upon spiritual blessings, and even favor upon favor, and gift heat upon gift. You ought to feel blessed already. For while the law was given through Moses, grace, unearned, undeserved favor, and spiritual blessing, and truth came through Jesus Christ. Uh, Hebrews 4, 16, the same uh, version, AM, PC, let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate to help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Boy, boy, if that, if that don't sound like black folk right there, the Lord may not come when you want him, but he always right on time. That, that's where y'all Negroes got that from right there. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for your power and your grace. I ask for you to help me bring a word for your people. Hide me behind your sacred desk. Anoint me and fill me with your spirit. I've been anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. But I want you, Lord, right now with the name of Jesus to make them rich, make them wealthy, take them to another level in your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And to take your seat, I want to speak to you from the subject of God's grace. See, this one for you, Peter. I called Luther and I said, since you didn't pay my people, I'm going to take your title. And he said, go ahead. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Brother Luther Barnes, for letting me use your title, God's Grace. Uh, anyway, you, you probably heard the term God's Grace used before, and perhaps you've heard it 
defined as God's unmerited favor. While the favor, and I can't preach like that. While the favor, y'all pray for my knee. I'm going to start over. All right. Hallelujah. Anyway, you probably heard the term God's grace used before, and perhaps you've heard it defined as God's unmerited favor. While the favor and love of God are aspects of his grace, it is much more than this. God's grace is his supernatural power, which enables us to overcome our shortcomings and serve him acceptably. Can I tell you something? Grace and mercy are not the same thing, right? Mercy is God not doing to you what you should be done to you, which is go to hell, right? That's mercy. When we sin and God don't kill us, when we fuss at God and God don't, don't do stuff to us that, that kill us, that, that's mercy, right? Grace is the empowerment to do something you shouldn't be able to do. That's, that's grace. You know what I'm saying? So you're really a superhero because you've been graced with unmerited favor. God has gifted you with supernatural gifts, spiritual gifts that are given without repentance. Even though you're crazy, whatever spiritual gift you have will never go away from you. You will still walk in that unmerited favor because God loves you so much. If he gives you something, he's not going to take it back. Yeah, 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 y'all don't hear me. God even got mad at Job when Job said the Lord gives and the Lord take away. And God said, were you there when I hung the stars? Were you there when I put, you rain the, 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 the rings around, you rained away? You there when I hung Jupiter in the sky? Were you there when I, do you know why the lion mane grows? Do you know how in the world the gazelle can jump so far? How, were you there when I made the world and hung it on his axis? He was so offended by Job. That's why I tell my ministers, if you ever read that at a funeral about the Lord give the Lord take away, he don't unless you tell me that Job said it because God got upset because God does not take away. The devil takes away because of our sin and our unrighteousness. But God only gives you blessings upon blessings. God wants to bless you. He wants to pour, open up the windows of heaven and pour the blessing that you won't even have room to receive. That's my God. My God is an abundant God. My God not stingy. My, my God has enough stuff to give to you and me. That's why I don't understand why people be hating on other people because God has so much blessing. He got enough for me. He got too much for me and too much for you. Why in the world are people hating when somebody else moves somewhere else? You ought to be happy when your neighbor gets blessed. That means God has got to your street. Oh, you better watch out. Oh, yeah, I don't get mad when the car in front of me finally gets through the red light when it turns green because I know I'm coming up next. Why would I be mad that the car in front of me was able to move and I, at least I moved up? Come on, somebody. You better be happy when people get blessed because that means God is coming your way. I don't know where God going with this. I, some, some 11 o'clock folk must have snuck in here because I used to be calm at 8. <laughs> somebody done woke up early to get ready for the Super Bowl or something. <laughs> God didn't just give us grace. He gave us, in his empowerment, uh, he, 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 he gives us his empowerment to deliver us from our sin. He also gave us grace to live successfully on this earth. Many Christians do not understand how to tap into the power that God placed in them. The same grace we receive to become born again it's the same grace we receive to live victoriously. It's the same thing. Through faith, we can obtain the grace to do anything we need to do, including discovering God's will for our lives. See, when Jesus came to earth, he taught about grace and truth. He gave us the whole truth about the grace of God. God's grace is not some vague religious concept. It is divine power. We have everything we need to live a life that pleases him. <clears throat> that was 2 Peter 1, 3 tells us, because he placed his grace within our born-again spirits. It is his, this grace <clears throat> that empowers us as believers, not our own human efforts alone. See, you can't work to obtain God's grace. There is nothing we have done to earn salvation which means there is nothing you can do to earn God's grace. It's the same spirit. 
Look, <clears throat> all we have to do is receive it by faith. <clears throat> once we have, <clears throat> excuse me, once we have a revelation <clears throat> of God's grace, we can depend on it as we carry out our daily activities. Whether we are faced with choosing the right place to live, the right career, or managing our finances God's way, we must learn how to follow our peace and depend on God's grace when making decisions in our life. I know you pray for your food, but did you pray for the boo you chose? Oh, yeah. And I know you prayed for that chicken, <clears throat> but did you pray for you took that job? I'm just saying. However, while we are dependent on God's grace, we know that there are some practical things that we need to do to live in this natural world, right? When we are waiting on to receive a rainbow word from God concerning an issue we are facing, we have to continue to make other decisions as we work, pay our bills, raise our families, and manage our finances. As we perform our day-to-day -day activities, we need to know how to operate in godly wisdom in every area of our lives. Can I tell you something? God not going to tell you anything that you should know. If you need a job, he's not going to take it to go fill out an application. Because he didn't give you a spirit of fear, but he gave you a spirit of power and what? A sound mind. If you have a sound mind and you need a job, you need to go fill out an application. You need to send some resumes in and begin to sit at home and pray that God helps you find one as you have already been outside turning your stuff in. God not just going to drop a job from heaven <clears throat> and you're not working on it. God will not give you spiritual power to do common sense stuff. Hmm? Someone's talking about sipping coffee because it's hot. Oh, Lord, the devil. That's you, you dummy. <laughs> you knew the coffee was hot when you put it to your mouth. You want to make everything spiritual. I'm just saying. I think I hit some people, but I apologize. <laughs> See, look. When we choose to make the word of God our final authority, we tap into the wisdom of God. God will help you understand things beyond your natural ability when you lean not on your own understanding and allow your steps to be ordered by him. Many times we struggle to fix what is wrong in our lives, often eliminating God in the process. Our own efforts usually leave us frustrated and fruitless. Depending on his grace is a more effective way to live. It strengthens our relationship with God because we are inviting him to be involved in our decisions. In other words, we rely on his word and his counsel to succeed in life. We acknowledge him as our primary source, not just a resource. If you got a bumper sticker that say, God is my co-pilot, take it off. He's not your co-pilot. He's your pilot. Some of y'all ain't never flown a plane, but he's your co-pilot. All of a sudden, you got your pilot's license. He's not your co-pilot. That means if he's your co-pilot, that means he and you in charge. At least say you his co-pilot. At least say you know you doing what he tell you to do. Because the co-pilot can't tell the pilot what to do. Oh, Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. So how in the world is God going to be your co-pilot? And not, that means you're telling him he don't have any authority. That means you there, Lord, stay right here. You like a genie in the bottle. I'm going to break it just in case. Just in case I need you, God, I'm going to keep you right here. But I don't really want you involved in my life every day. I just want you, when I do something so crazy, I know I can't get out. See, see, see this is a prophetic. I, I, I'm, let me stop. I'm over-spiritualized now. I'm just tripping. But, but see, y'all got on red. It ain't even Pentecost Sunday. Lord, have mercy. That ain't nothing but a move of God called Baptist folk don't never wear red except on Pentecost Sunday as if that's the only day that the Holy Spirit has authority. The Holy Spirit has authority every day. If you let him lead you to all truth, he'll lead you toward the, to, he'll lead you beside the still waters. He'll order your steps in his word. If you let the Holy Spirit be in your life every day and acknowledge him and stop saying something told me to do this and something told me, the Holy Spirit told you because the Holy Spirit is is there to lead you into all truth. The Holy Spirit is there to protect you, but you want to, you want to, talk about something told you. 
Anyway, thank y'all for being Holy Ghost on a different day. Furthermore, we require God's grace to meet our needs on a daily basis. Look at 2 Corinthians 9, 8. It says, and God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, right? He'll give you everything you need, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. So look, he'll give you a blessing and he's making you a blessing because he's going to give you so much to make charitable donation whenever you need to, whenever God tells you to. That's why he blesses you. He blesses you and gives you favor, not just so you can buy a Bentley, not just so you can buy a Benz, but so that you can have money in your pocket for when God says, I need you to plant your seed over here. New Beast Grove needs this over here. First Baptists need this over there. The homeless people need this over there. You need this over there. And I'm going to give you blessings upon blessings upon blessings. I'm going to give you a good measure blessing. Press down, shaking together and running over because I can trust you to put the seed where I tell you to. Come on, somebody. According, you got to listen to Jesus. If a farmer come here and bring all his seeds and plant it out there, he crazy. That's not good ground to be planting your, 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 your corn out here. That, 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 that's not even where you're supposed to be planted. God will lead you where you're supposed to plant your seed. And he's saying, if you listen to me and do with the resources of what I tell you to, I'm going to give you more because I can trust you. Come on, somebody. If you can't see him back up, sing back up, I can't give you a solo. <laughs> just helping you out. I felt the spirit. No, I was like, I was chill, I was chill. <laughs> Look here. When I became a born again Christian, right, it was in response to hearing the word of God. And, and, and it was preached about salvation. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I received salvation of grace. Uh, 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 through faith, right? I received my salvation by grace through faith. The same manner in which we received our salvation is the same way we receive everything else in the kingdom. See, we, we, we accept our salvation, right? And, and, and when, when people come at us, we let them know it's just in our heart. That's what happened. I can't explain to you what happened. But for some reason, we overcomplicate finances. We overcomplicate careers. We overcomplicate everything else in our life. When Jesus comes to our heart, we just know. The same spirit that came into your life that saved you is the same spirit that gives you the power to obtain wealth. The same spirit that gives you the uh, a power to succeed. So why do we make it so complicated? If he says, I will not withhold any good and perfect gift from you. If he said, you're going to be the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower, above and not beneath, why do we make it so complicated? If he said, he who began a good work in you shall finish it, why do we make it so daggone complicated? It's simple. The same spirit that saved my soul is the same spirit that'll give me a blessing of upon blessing upon blessing. The same spirit that saved my soul is the same spirit that caused me to be able to conquer racism and sexism and whatever else I need to conquer. It's simple. We make life so complicated. It's simple. The Holy Spirit gives you the power to do whatever it is you need to do. Look, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, so you won't think it's just Maxwell saying this. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. You can't brag and say, I'm saved and you not, you sinner, you. No, it was given to you by grace so nobody can boast. When we understand and meditate on the word concerning financial provision, we position ourselves to receive revelation from God. See, one way of meditating on the word is by speaking the word, right? 
When we hear ourselves repeat the word of God, we stir up our faith, right? Because faith comes by what? Hearing, not having heard. You could have heard a word last year, and now your faith gone because you have not been exercising it, right? You can sit up there and, 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 and not work out and think because you got buff, you're going to stay that way. No, you got to keep lifting. You got to keep exercising. You're going to stay in shape. Right? That, that's all I'm saying. So, so, so you got to keep building your faith. You got to keep confessing the word of God. Right? Because the word of God is the sword of what? The spirit. Which means the more you read the word, the more your spirit is magnified. He said each of us was given a measure of faith. <clears throat> all of us were given the same measure. You receive the same, you receive the same, you receive the same, you, all y'all receive the same, I receive the same measure. The, the problem is some of us grew it and some of us didn't. Some of us still got a little pocket knife, a little butter knife. We ain't got no sword yet because we don't read the word enough. You got to get all up on the devil to do something. Him, you got to hold on. <laughs> you got to button up. You got to stare the devil about 400 times. <laughs> uh, you, you, but you read the word, you got a sword, you got a weapon because now your spirit has been magnified because everywhere you went, you confess your scripture. Every time somebody tried to bring you back to when you used to be broke, you said, my God has applied all of my needs according to my riches and glory. When people try to tell you that you're sick because you used to have cancer, you said, oh my God, by his stripes, I'm healed. You got to start putting the word on the situation. When your enemy come at you like a flood, you got to say, even though the fire came at me, I shall not be burned and the water shall not overtake me. Even when my enemy come at me like a flood, my God shall stick closer to me than any brother or sister. My God is right there with me. What can separate me from the love of my God? No height, no depth, no principality, no former thing, no latter thing. Nothing can separate me from the love of my God. Not even my own self, not even my own wretchedness, not even my own sinful nature can separate me from the love of my God. Oh, nothing. And when you learn how much God loves you, you will read your word. You will magnify the spirit within you because you know it's by grace and not of yourself. It's him that gives you the power to obtain wealth, not yourself. You keep putting too much responsibility on yourself. It's God's grace. Uh, see, you, you got to put that on every area. Because just because you walked in faith in one area don't mean that faith going to transfer to the other area. It's something else. You can go out there and play basketball and be good all day, but go out there and play football and get knocked out. Because that ain't what you were ready for. You feel me? You can be a great baseball player and can't play golf. You have to build up your natural muscles and muscle memory in that sport as well if you're going to be successful, right? So why is it that if you know you can play baseball and may not be good at tennis, you think because you have faith in, in, in finances that you're going to have faith in relationship? Huh? Why is it that you, you, you got faith in business and think it's going to transfer over to your personal. No, you had to, you had to, you had to find scriptures that fit every area of your life, including your finances. That's why you broke, because you're not putting the word on it. Because you put the word on it, God said, my word shall never return unto me, boy. That's what my God told me. My God told me if I put the word of God on it, it's coming back. Not my word, not Maxwell word, uh-uh, not Shaw word, uh-uh, uh-uh, not, not, not Cooley word. No, 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 not, not Ozzy word. No, if I put the word of God on a situation, it's going to come back, and it's going to bring me back what it was supposed to do. Oh, you don't hear me. When you go to class and you write an answer, that teacher don't care what you think. She wants you to get an answer. She taught you. Huh? Or you going to get an F. I don't agree with the writer of this text. This is what my daddy taught me this. 
F. <laughs> right. And we know when we go to school, we have to get a teacher back what they want, even if we don't agree. Right? So what makes you think that God is any different? God wants you to give back to him what he already told you. So when the devil come at me in whatever area, I'm going to find a scripture that fit that area and I'm going to put it on him. You better put that word on him. He can't do anything with that word. He can't stop the word of God. God said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never return unto me void. So God is saying, even if heaven fall down, my word still going to stand. See, see, this is, which means if I put my word, the word on it, God obligated to take care of it anyway. Because he said it. He submit to his own word. You better start putting that word out there. If you can't read, get an audio book. The phone will read it to you. I got this lecture. You, you can hear? That ain't me. That's the Holy Ghost. Don't blame me for none of this. Damn. this is, yeah, yeah, but them 11 o'clock, they snuck in here. I'm telling you, they out here. They in the choir. Some 11 o'clock in the choir. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> so you got to stir up your faith so you can expect what you're supposed to get. But you can't stir up your faith without the word. Right? You got to stir up your faith by reading the word. Your faith not going to get stirred listening to Tupac, Kendrick Lamar, Beyonce. Now, if you bought a ticket to Beyonce concert, you better come bring a double portion back <laughs> to whatever church you go to. <laughs> Just throwing it out there for all preachers across the world. Hallelujah. <laughs> God created you for a good purpose, and that purpose is designed to bring him pleasure and glory. Every gift, talent, and ability God has given us is for a very specific purpose of ultimately glorifying him. The paths that we that he has planned for us are good paths that lead to abundance. The grace of God on our lives gives us the ability to do everything he has called us to do as we allow our steps to be ordered by him. So as long as he, we allow him to order our steps, he's going to give us abundance. Because he'll give us abundance because he can trust us. And when we have money in our pocket, we'll be able to give to whatever charitable gifts he wants us to give, and we'll still have leftover because he wants to make us a blessing. God is not interested in giving you just enough. God is interested in giving you abundance. God is an exceeding God. God gets offended when you got these little bitty visions that you can do on your own because he's saying, you're not trying to include me in anything. I want to do something big. God don't want to do anything little. It was funny when I first started doing the in touch, and I was like, we're going to make this citywide. They were like, no, no, just stick to this right here. No, it's going to be citywide. How, is it? How about this? You handle your job. You handle your job. You handle your job. If all y'all handle y'all little jobs, let the big job be on me. Because at the end of the day, my God doesn't do small stuff. My God don't, my God don't want to waste his time with small stuff, helping you do small stuff, right? He, I mean, he, he'll tell you some little things that'll help your life. But I'm saying he wants you to do, he wants you to have a big vision. I said this before, the problem with the church is not that we aim high and miss, it's that we aim low and hit. And then we leave all the room where we should be and the devil takes over territory because we didn't go for what God wanted us to go for. All right? Revelation 4.11 says, thou art worthy. O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. God has created us to do good works, and the works of God that we are ordained to carry out can be done only through our relationship with Jesus Christ. The grace of God is the catalyst that enables us to do great things for the kingdom of God. God will never let us compete with his grace. Huh? He worse than Luther Barnes. He won't let you get no... no <laughs> he, he won't let you compete with his grace. 
When we try to do things our own way, we are actually operating in pride because we are essentially saying that our way is better than God's way. Even as it relates to changing certain bad habits we have, we must understand that willpower is not the answer. God has empowered us to overcome our flesh through his grace so we don't have to rely on ourselves to get the job done. I can't do it. I can't do it. We know you can't do it. You got to only can do it by God's grace. His grace is sufficient. Come on, somebody. Paul said he asked God to take this from him three times. Take it from me. And God said, no, my grace is sufficient. When you get down on your knees and listen to me and let me order your steps in my word, then I'll let the mess fall off you. Can I tell you a secret? The way you can really do what God wants you to do is stop thinking about what you shouldn't do. Oh, I don't want to drink that Hennessy today. Oh, I don't want to get drunk like I used to get drunk. Well, what you thinking about? Drunk. You thinking about drinking. As a man or woman thinking, so is he or she. You got to look toward the heathen which cometh your help and then all that other stuff will fall off of you. God will give you the grace to overcome your shortcomings because when you keep your eyes on him, you can't concentrate on anything else. If you really come in here and worship like you're supposed to and worship him in spirit and truth, you don't have time to be mad at anybody. You don't have time to be backbiting. You don't have time to be gossiping because when you worship God and understand how big he is, I ain't got time to be in a cat fight in a dog fight with you. I got a devil to fight and my God has ordained me to do something big. Got time to be messing with this small mess. Jesus. (laughs) He, He may have given you an idea or concept that is going to impact many lives. Remember that grace and faith are connected. Faith comes from the Word of God. When you find out what the Bible says about the issues you face, when you receive a spoken word from God that confirms uh, what you are setting out to do, the grace of God causes your endeavors to succeed. It's God's grace. See, grace and mercy follow you, and I'm so glad both follow me, but I need you to understand the distinction of the two. Mercy following you because you know you shouldn't have went down that street. Your wife don't live on that street. (laughs) You done made a wrong turn. Mercy followed you. Mercy is God not doing to you what he should. Grace is you conquering something that nobody thought you could do. Nobody thought that certain things could be that big. Nobody thought that you'd be able to do what it is you were doing, but it was because of God's grace. The empowerment, the unmerited favor in your life. Y'all better watch out. You better understand that Marvel ain't got nothing on you. Superman don't have anything on you. Aquaman can't do what you do. Wonder Woman ain't ready for you. The Green Lantern ain't ready. You are a superhero. God has graced you to do things that no man or woman has ever done before. You will go where Dr. Spock ain't even been. You will go where Captain Kirk hasn't been. God will lead you beside the still water. He'll make you lay down in green pastures. He has graced you. I'm ready to preach today. I don't know what's going on in life. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I'm ready for my overflow. I'm ready for the empowerment of wealth to be on my life. I shall not be broke another day in my life. You better tell the devil that he better step back. (laughs) Boy, if I'm like this at 8 o'clock. See, see, when the devil resists you, I, I, I was about to call Jay and say, I need you to preach because my knee was hurting so bad. My knee ain't hurt in a long time, my, but my knee was hurting so bad. I even said, hey, go ahead and get the stool up there. But once I sat down and started reading the word of God, the word of God said, hey, 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 no way. I, he, God said, hell no. Y'all don't hear me. Not hell. I'm not cussing. He told hell no. You can't stop my man of God. Hey, when you got the anointed in your life, he'll empower you to do. 
Now you ain't cussing. I need to look down there and say, hell no. You better tell the devil, hell no. You can't stop me. God has begun a good work in me and he shall finish it. Can the devil stop me? Can hell stop me? Can anybody stop me? A Democrat can't stop me. The Republicans can't stop me. Police can't stop me. Racism can't stop me. What can separate me from the love of my God? No height, no depth, no former thing. No ladder thing. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. He would not withhold any good or perfect gift from me. Blessing upon blessing. Blessing upon blessing. I feel the Holy Ghost moving. I feel the Holy Ghost moving. I feel like Jeremiah. I feel that there's a fire shut up in my bones. And it gotta get out. I gotta praise him for where he brought me from. I gotta praise him for where he taking me. I gotta praise him. Hey! You better look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil can't stop me. Say, neighbor, I need you to look down and say, hell no. Hell can't stop me. The devil can't slow you down. I need you to get to Rebecca. Write the vision down and make it plain so that you can run that power. And all though it tarry, it won't tarry. Now I used to be confused with that. Now it said it won't tarry. Although it will tarry, it won't read the whole verse. He said that even though it's slowing down in your mind, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day to God. So even though it's tearing into you in the natural, God has already finished it. Y'all don't hear it. It's already done. When you believed it, Daniel, I already dispatched the angel to you. It took 21 days, but once you set your heart to me, I dispatched my angel. Once you set your heart to me, I gave you wealth. Once you understood the concept that Maxwell is trying to get in your heart with the abundant life, I already grabbed and choked out the spirit of poverty in your life. It has not manifested here yet, but you got to continue to be faithful and it shall come because it's already done in heaven. And though it tarry, it shall not tarry because it's not tarrying to God. It's tarrying to you in your chronological time. But in God interstellar time, it's already done. Your overflow already there tomorrow. Your overflow already there next week. Your overflow already there next year. It's already there. God already sees it. It's already been released. But your faith has to be able to pull the grace down. Ignite your faith. He said he hides your blessing in spiritual places. Spiritual places not low. Natural can never supersede the spirit. 
your spiritual gifts shall never be overtaken by the supernatural power of Satan. You have authority. The devil can't stop you. Hell can't stop you. Racism can't stop you. That lie can't stop you. Stop giving it life. Who cares? One thing God did in that campaign, I ain't care nothing about nobody lying on me for real, for real. Because it don't matter. As long as you covered in that area. The only place you can get hit is where your righteousness don't sit. Now, one thing about me, my greatest weakness is me telling the truth too much. Y'all was like, why you say that? Well, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> you ain't got no filter. No, I just tell you what I think. Got time to be sick, cold stuff. I got something else to do. Uh, let me see if I can say this the right way. I don't like you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Look here. But look at this. Look at 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient. I just wanted to read it. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. You know why? Because some of us in our strong areas, we don't let God do nothing. I got this, God. I don't need you on this one. But when we walk in our weakness, oh, God, I need this, I need this. And if you can be like that with your strength, ooh, child. If you could submit your strength to God the way you submit your weakness, if you could say, God, if you can get me through this gifted moment right now, the same way you riding down 64 on the way from the Super Bowl part of the night, Lord, if you just get me here, I won't talk to Jack or Daniel ever again. I leave him alone. But if you could get like that with your strengths and submit even your strengths to him, oh, Lord, have mercy. You submit your finances to him and you submit your singing to him and you submit your, 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 your musicianship to him. You submit your, your, your speaking to him and you submit, submit your, your career to him and you submit your family to him. Oh, Jesus. Whenever you feel weak or incapable of carrying out what God has called you to do, even as it relates to obeying his word, remember that the power of Christ is inside of you, strengthening you. A part of God himself lives in you. Jesus said, I'm going to send you an advocate. When I leave for him, I'm going to send you an advocate. I'm going to send you the paraclete. I'm going to send you the comforter, the helper in the form of the Holy Spirit, and he will lead you into all truth. And you'll be able to do greater exploits in my name even than I did. That's what he said. It doesn't matter at all how much, if all hell comes against you. That's why we say hell no. We ain't curse. We were telling hell no. Just keeping it 100 to y'all Twitters and whatever. I ain't going to make the whole church cuss. Maybe just y'all. No, I <laughs> His strength is the grace you need to be successful. See, when you go at a situation, he get, you know why God gives you something so big? It's because when you're out there and you try to turn around, he know you can't go back. See, see, if, if, if Peter would have walked in the water from the shore, he could have turned around and walked back. But when Peter got out the boat in the middle of the sea, in the midst of a storm, when he started looking at the waves and sinking, he had to look back at Jesus. Because if he didn't look back at Jesus, he was going to die. God allowed you to be in situations so big that without him, he knows you know you ain't going to make it. That's why he gives you stuff bigger than you. That's why some people can't stomach me. You be ready to throw up around me because my vision big. I don't like little stuff. It irritates me. 
What's the point in me doing something somebody else can do by themselves? Why are you calling me? I hate when some preachers call you together, all these big old meetings, and they didn't want to do a little youth rally with 20 vote. What you call me here for? You could do a 20 vote by yourself. Wasting my time. Do something big. Do something where you're trying to reach the whole daggone city, not trying to reach one side. You mean to tell me I got to drive all the way over here to the south side so you can just deal with the south side? I could have just stayed on the north side and did the north. So I'm thinking about Jon Snow and all that. I'm just trying to, I ain't trying to go over there. I'm just saying. Oh, they all go over here. Let's meet, let's meet, let's meet. Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to have a meeting over here. We're going to do this one time. God gives you big vision. I done made a lot of people mad. Oh, it don't matter. Be right. I'm sorry. I love y'all. I do. I'm just, just got to make it bigger next time. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> my leg, my leg would hurt in the last time. That's why I ain't go. I can always use that right now. My knee would hurt. I'm going to be there. Now, see, the back, back to the word of God. You have a life application. So the, the sermon, in this sermon series, the first sermon of this series, I gave you some scriptures to meditate on concerning your finances. If you haven't gotten that, get it from me. Um, email me or get it, or email Donna or find a Usher or Usher, whichever one you pronounce it, and they'll give you one. Here are some declarations on grace that will help you continue to decree that God is able to make all grace increase toward you and that you will always, under all circumstances, have whatever you need to be self-sufficient. Right? That means you ain't got to borrow stuff from nobody. Self-sufficient. Confess that you have an abundant life by grace through faith. I believe if you stay in faith by confessing the word of God and hearing the word, your faith will be ignited and your lack will begin to disappear. Anyway, you have it. By grace through faith, I believe I have received the ability to hear God's voice and receive the knowledge of his specific will for my life for this day. I release my faith for the grace to live a life that pleases God. I'm able to serve him acceptably through grace. Through grace, I have the ability to obey God's word. I am no longer a slave to sin, nor am I subject to it. I walk by faith and not by what my physical senses tell me. Even if I look like I'm losing, I know God is going to bring it to fruition because he who began a good work in me shall finish it. I know it ain't on your paper, but the Holy Ghost said he want to do what he want to do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. His grace makes me an overcomer. Through grace, I know God's perfect will for my life. Grace is not earned. It is received by faith. I receive the benefits of God's grace in my life through faith in his word. Jesus Christ, who is the manifested word of God, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. If I read my word, I understand who Jesus is. If I read my word, I build a better relationship with him, and I'll be able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me, not some things, not a lot of things, but I'm able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can walk through cancer. I can walk through racism. I can walk through sexism. I can walk through anybody that's trying to knock me over because my God said he who began a good work in me shall finish it. I possess grace for overcoming anger, lust, and all other evil emotions. God is able to make me all grace, give me all the increase in my life. Blessings on top of blessings. Y'all don't hear me. Blessings on top of blessings. Gifts on top of gifts. He ain't trying to be stingy. If my birthday is the 24th of December, He's still to bring me a good gift on Christmas Day because my God shall supply all of my needs. I 
need you to feel this. God is ready to bless you. You can read the rest on your own. God is ready to bless you. God is ready to give you an overflow. God is ready to give you favor. God is ready to give you increase. God is ready to give you healing. God is ready to give you victory. He shall bring to fruition what he said he will do. He will do. What did God promise you? I know it might have took a year. We've been making do it for a night. I know some of us have had a long night. But even though your night may have been years, God is telling me right now, the cake of word shall not take your gifts. The locusts shall not mess up your farm. The bad credit won't mess up your business. He shall bring to fruition what he's put in you. If you can see it, he's already given it to you. Faith is the evidence and the substance. If my faith sees it, then I receive it. If my faith sees it, it's already tangible because my faith is the evidence and my faith is the substance. My faith makes it real, not your acceptance. My faith makes it real, not your belief. My faith makes it real, not what you see. My faith makes it real, not my past. My faith makes it real, not my education. My faith makes it real, not my race. My faith makes it real, not you telling me I don't deserve it because my God said he blessed me for his name's sake, not my own. He shall not withhold any good and perfect gift from me. I'm blessed in the valley. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed and highly favored. Even though I walk with a limp, I'm a limp into my blessing. I'm a limp into my increase. I'm a limp into my overflow. I'm a limp into my favor. I'm a limp into my victory. But one thing I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna stop moving. I'm gonna press toward the mark of his holy cause and his grace shall be sufficient for me. Through grace, through grace, God's grace empowers you to be successful. Not your race, not your ethnicity. It don't matter if you white, black, yellow, brown, whatever. It don't matter. God has given you a measure of faith, a measure of grace. And the more you read your word, the more it's magnified. God going to walk you into some overflowing blessings. You're not going to have room to receive it. I didn't go through all the stuff. I wrote it down and they put some of them on the screen and you got the handouts if you need an email. Make sure I email it out to people when I go upstairs. I'm going to email it. Well, no, Donna can email it. She can email it to everybody on the converted kit and everybody on Newbies Grow. Tell her going to send that out so they can have it. Because the more you read and the creed and the clap what the word says. See, most of this ain't nothing but scriptures that I kind of just paraphrase so you could just go through them and you read on a rhythm and get happy. Tap into your emotions. God's word shall never return unto him void. 
And whatever he promised you, you're going to have it in the name of Jesus. Walk in it. Woo. Walk in it. Lord, have mercy. Is there one that wants to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Ooh, I'm going to sit down right now. Is there one? Hey, you know what, man? Open up the church, man. I'm going to go sit down. Is there one that wants to come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? This abundant blessing in which Pastor talked about this grace that we all can be the recipient of comes and flows out of the relationship that we have with an amazing God. His first blessing that he has for your life is saving you from your sins. Romans teaches us and tells us that if we confess and we believe, that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, then you and I can be saved from our sins. Who is it today that says, I want to make that declaration. I believe that he is Lord. If that's you, I want you to come out of that aisle. Deacon will meet you down front. Maybe the second call is maybe you do believe, but maybe somewhere you slipped out of the will of God maybe grace wasn't moving fast enough for you. So you decided to walk away and make it on your own. The amazing thing about God, God in his infinite wisdom still loves us even when we step outside of him. And just like the prodigal son, he is waiting for you to come back home. Who is it today that says, listen, I need to return back home I want to rededicate my life. If that's you, I want you to come out of that aisle. I want you to meet us down front. Here's a third call. Maybe there's someone that says, you know what, I, I, I'm saved, but I'm out of covenant relationship. I don't have a church home. So maybe there's somebody that says, listen, I want to connect with this church. I believe the Lord is telling me to be here. We would love to be your church family. We would love to connect with you. We would love to be with you. If that's you, I want you to step out of that aisle. I want you to come down front. For those that desire prayer, you may come down as well. For those of you online, and maybe you fall into one of those three categories, I want you to DM us no matter what platform you're watching. And we'll walk you through the plan of salvation. We'll walk you through connection and membership. Or we'll walk you through a prayer of rededication as we believe the same God, again, that's moving here will also move there as well. Come on, let's bless God for the word of God on today. And while your hands are clapping, come on, let's bless God for our pastor as well. We're getting ready to go down from this place. I want you to come on, stand if you're not standing. I want you... I got you. I want you to uh, remember all of our announcements that we have shared of what is coming up. And if you are not following us on social media or connected um, to our email or converter kick, I want you to reach out to us so that we can get you connected so that you can stay abreast of everything that we have going on. Just a reminder yet again that Sunday school will take place in our sanctuary. And so that will happen immediately after we are dismissed uh, from our 8 o'clock worship experience. Look at your neighbor to the left and to the right. Say, neighbor, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Let's pray together. Now, God, we thank you and we praise you for reminding us of the riches and the abundance of your grace. And God, it is my prayer that this does not fall on deaf ears. It is my prayer that, God, we walk in your grace. God, that you continue to do things that blow our mind. God, I don't have to wait till June or July. I don't have to wait till the end of the year. God, I believe you can do it as soon as I leave this place. So God, allow your grace to abound on us abundantly. 
thank you right now, God, for what is on the way. Thank you, God, for what you are getting ready to open up. Thank you, God, for what you're already getting ready to bless me with. Thank you, God, for the doors I'm going to walk in. I pray for a Luke 2, 52 anointing that, God, I've got favor with you and also with man. Now the grace of our Lord be with us now and forevermore in Jesus' mighty name. The blessed people of God shout amen. Amen. Amen.